Well, let's start with the man of the moment, Erling Haaland. I mean, you play with some strikers. You you managed some great strikers. Yeah. I mean, you managed brilliant oh. strikers. What about this guy? And I'm playing here on a golf day. With, with, with one of the best? With the Jimmy Greaves, for Jimmy Greaves' uh, charity. So that says it all. It's quite uh, poignant you're asking me that. Haaland is a, he's a bit of a freak in, in the nicest possible way. Um, I thought when he came to City, when they bought him, I thought, oh dear, you know, any any box they hadn't got ticked, he now ticks that. You can play over the top to him, you know, so you can play counter, you can play into him to hold things up, as well as how they've been playing for years. And uh, his, his finishing has been just second to none. And uh, you know what I mean? He, he, he actually is not a player that has to be involved in the game that much as well. He's got that instinct that he comes alive in and around that penalty area, just knows where to run. You can't coach that. He's just got an instinct of movement. He's got physique. He's got every, every box is ticked. There's not one thing I can... I, I can't really. Maybe a little bit better off his right foot. Left, I don't know. He hasn't got a weakness. He really hasn't. I'm not particularly happy with his hair, but at my age, so you're getting jealous, aren't I? So at 22, how does he get better? Oh, you will get better naturally anyway. You don't hit your peaks, you're 28. And, um, you know, what Harry Kane's going through the last two or three years, and he'll continue that for another couple. His, un- his understanding of the game will get even better. He, you know, he's playing with a team that creates so many different chances. Then the level at City is always of, of, of creating opportunities is always going to be there. It's not like if two, two players don't play, then the, the creative players are not going to be, you know, you got creative players waiting to come in, so the, it's constant the, the, the creation, the service that he's going to get. So um, you know, I can see him just keep breaking records. You played with someone, let's say, like Kevin Keegan, who was a European Footballer mm. of the Year. You managed people like Michael Owen, Alan Shearer, people like that. I mean, just in, in general, you say at the beginning he was a freak in a good way obviously mm, yeah. what has he got maybe these other guys who we always thought in the past well, were normally, normally, if you're, normally if you're really quick you can be quite slight and small um, you know and if you're really really the physique and the, and the frame that he's got you perhaps can't get in behind defences but he does both and and you know what you can have pace but not know how to time your runs to get in there I see when, when particularly when De Bruyne is playing he's one that can play what I call you know in the funnel in that in behind defenders from in the funnel they play slightly different uh, when they're patient but he, he makes runs and the ball doesn't even come half the time you know there's even more to come from him if someone sees him from midfield and uh, him and De Bruyne that's why him and De Bruyne they've just got this this little I call it like a it's like a little I don't know. It's, it's telepathic. A, yeah, it's telepathic. It's, it's something there between you and a striker. You know where he wants to run. You know where he's going to run, and he knows where you're going to put it. And you know, I played with players like that, and I see De Bruyne in him having this sort of. It's like a little. It's 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 hard to explain. There's an imagination about a, a midfield player that the striker knows has got, and he'll make the runs, and the ball will be played. And as I say, he ticks every box. We say Harry Kane is world class, which he is. Mm-hmm. De Bruyne, um, De Bruyne, Haaland. Of course, he's world class. Yeah, he's well. He's not an all-round player. He's not going to drop into midfield and hit crossfield balls like Harry does for Tottenham at the moment. If Harry was playing for City, he wouldn't have to do that. It'd just be it'd just be off the back of people where you're seeing Haaland. So you know, it's horses for course. He's playing with different style of football, different teams. But no, he's world class now, and he's only going to get better. I mean, you know, he's. Um, He's one of them players, you know, if you ask me, would you pay money to go and watch, I'll go, yeah, I'll go and watch Messi. I'll go and watch Ronaldo, maybe, and I'll go and watch the great Maradona and people like that and Zola and Burkamp. Would I go and pay money to go and see Ireland? Probably not, actually, but he's a world-class finisher, if you see my point. You know, he's great for a team, great for a support. If you support City, like, you know you've got a chance with him in your team. Finally, let's talk about Spurs. I mean, you won two FA Cups with them, you managed them and everything. I mean... When's the trophy drought going to end? Oh, well, it's a big question. It's an, e- it's an easy one to say, well, it's hopefully it'll be soon, blah, blah, blah. But I think, uh, realistically, you've got, to, you've got to say that 
there is a massive crossroads there and there's a there's almost like a build of the squad build of the team build of where you want to go mentally i think is the key so uh, it's not just get a new manager in and go from there i think the whole place needs to sit down and be on the same page and everyone kicking in the same direction it's all a bit of a cliche but it's true i don't see that quite there at the moment and if you know if that happens then then tottenham can become a massive club again